Once again, welcome to the 30th National Order of the Arrow Conference. It's great to see so many brothers here at Indiana University, the location of the first NOAC 51 years ago. Since then, nine other conferences have taken place on this beautiful campus. I know that this will be a very special and unique conference for each of you. The planning committee, made up of section chiefs from across the nation and hundreds of other staffers, have worked tirelessly to bring you what I think is the best NOAC ever. I would like to thank them for their hard work in preparing for your arrival today. They have been extremely creative and dedicated, traits that have made my job so easy and even enjoyable. But now you are the ones who bring purpose and light to this event. We are here as one body, with one purpose, and as one order. While we recognize that everyone comes here with a purpose, it's important to remember that each one of us can make a difference. You see, this theme this year is the power of one. Ask yourself what the power of one means to you. It's a personal question, one that can only be answered by us, by yourselves. There is no wrong answers and as many correct answers as there are seats filling this hall tonight. Maybe to some of our advisors is to inspire and mentor as many youth as possible, thereby having a personal impact. To our youth leadership, the purpose is to put on the best program for our new inductees. We know it differs for all of you assembled here tonight, but it certainly can be found within. We all have a story about that one person who has made us who we are today. Maybe it's our mother or father, our siblings or grandparents. For some, it may be scout leaders or school teachers. I ask you to think into your own lives. Can you identify the people who have made the most impact on you? Serving as national chief over the past seven months has given me the opportunity to meet and work with thousands of airmen from around the nation. This honor gives me the incredible opportunity to meet amazing people who have the power to make a difference in our communities, our nation, and our order. We are few in number, but our power is significant. We all have the ability to impact, inspire, and encourage others. When I think about my life, it's tough to just pick one person who has had a tremendous impact on me, as if I have been blessed with so many wonderful people. Mr. Schaefer, my scoutmaster, Bill, my section advisor, and of course, my mother and father. There are countless stories that I could tell about each of them, and I'm sure they have a few about me as well, for better and for worse. There is, however, one person that sticks out for the profound impact she had on me, my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. G. Not for her uncanny ability to know when I was up to no good, but also for her extraordinary care and grace. She would always find a way to offer gentle, yet firm reminders to keep me in line. Well, not all the time. Occasionally, she had to employ her direct intervention techniques. I think tonight she would be proud to witness me on stage. It was her teachings about never accepting the status quo that reminded me the most. She reminded me that I could do anything and be anything that I've ever wanted to do. She gave all of her students the opportunity to be group leaders. She encouraged us to believe anything is possible, but hinted that it was up to us to make it possible. Her favorite question was why. It wasn't meant to discourage, but rather provoke thought about why things are the way they are. We may know that the sky is blue, but why is it blue? And two plus two equals four, but why? It was a fourth grade lesson that remains as potent and fresh in me today as it did back then. Today and throughout this conference, we celebrate the power in each and every one of us. I challenge you not to accept something just because it is that way. We are here to get in touch with ourselves so we can promote change, improve, and use our own power to make a difference in the world. Last summer, 
I had the incredible opportunity to serve on the instructor corps for Era Corps 5. On our last night together, my crew decided to climb a hill in the Bridger Teton National Forest to watch the sunset. It was there where we conducted our nightly program. That night, we focused on a single question, why you, why now? The resulting discussion proved to be a meaningful and memorable, and memorable conclusion to a well-spent summer, itself a clear demonstration of the power of one. We learned to dream big and make it happen. Why are you here at the National Order of the Arrow Conference? What can you do to contribute to our brotherhood? How can your efforts improve the Order of the Arrow, make your own life better? In the grand scheme of things, I cannot honestly say that I know for certain why I am here. What I do know is that it is my duty and my job to take the most out of every situation I find myself in. Whether you serve as a lodge treasurer, a chapter secretary, section chief, or national chief, there is always someone counting on us. Why us? Why now? Because tomorrow is too late, and if we don't, who will? This is a responsibility that I hold very close to my heart, that I have taken with me throughout the past seven months. One of my favorite films is Pay It Forward, the story of a teacher who assigns each of his students the responsibility to create a project to change the world. The class objects, saying the assignment is too hard, but the teacher clearly points out that anything is possible. There's a saying, don't ever doubt that a small group of dedicated people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that has ever changed the world. Don't doubt your ability to influence others and have a major impact. Who knows, you might be the one to change the world. Our history is full of individuals who are just like you and me, sitting in a classroom or among a group of their peers. They had courage to stand up, just like Miss G, and ask why. I'd like to talk to you about two people. The first is Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson was the first African-American Major League Baseball player in the modern era to break baseball's color barrier. This ended a 60-year stretch of segregation in professional baseball. Because discrimination dominated some aspects of American life at the time, Robinson's baseball career had a major cultural impact beyond professional sports and was a catalyst for the civil rights movement. Robinson, through his perseverance, epitomizes the power of one man. Reflecting on his career, he said, a life is not important, but the impact it has on others' lives. Robinson embodied that power, proving to us that one can certainly make a difference. A far cry from professional baseball is Mother Teresa. She cared for the poor, the sick, orphaned, and the dying. What an inspiration she was and continues to be for millions of people. She was selfless and cared only about helping others. She is a great example of cheerful service. I think it's fair to say that her dedication has changed the way we all think about the world. Yet, another example of the power of one. I ask you to look at the people sitting around you tonight. Think about the scouts in your troop. They are all leaders. They each have a power. Observe the challenge they face and learn from the actions they take. Take the time to look at yourself. You too have the power. It holds tremendous responsibility, a responsibility to take action. Throughout this week, I want all of you to search down within. Discover your power, because with power comes potential. What difference will you make? How will you affect not only our order, but this thing we call life as well? I challenge you this next week. Go out and meet others who share the same passions and interests as you do. I challenge you to harness your power. Learn to use it, to channel it, to make a difference. Indeed, you have the power of one.